What goes bump in the night? And why is it a Pokemon? Welcome back, fellow gamers. It is I, Amanda, here to tell you 10 spooky stories as we count down the top 10 forgotten Pokemon creepypastas that will make you cry. Well, I'm close to 10 anyways. One is a very long, broken up one, but it's really good, so. Hopefully, you have some tissues nearby for those tears that undoubtedly are about to fall. What is the scariest Pokemon to you? Number 10, Strangled Red, Chapter One. I look down at the found cartridges sticker on the front. Just a plain old red version. The sticker torn slightly across the Charizard's neck, but that was expected with such an old game. I had a blue version as a kid, so I was a bit eager to see the albeit minimal differences red version had. I was rather disappointed by what I saw when the title screen showed up. It read, Pokemon Strangled red version. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming, why not show us you love us by clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any creepypastas. Number 9, Everything Gray. I found this cartridge in a trash bin when the garbage truck backed into my neighbor's dumpster. I went over to help them right their bin, and when I did, I noticed it among the rubbish. I handed it to them, asking them if they had meant to throw it out or if it was damaged in some way. They looked confused and remarked they hadn't ever thrown it out at all, but they did share that the cartridge had been distracting their daughter a bunch recently, so maybe she had decided to toss it, trying to kick her Pokemon obsession, and finally focus on her schoolwork, like they had suggested. My neighbor asked me if I wanted to keep the cartridge, and I agreed to keep it. It was a gray Pokemon cartridge and looked nothing like I had ever seen before personally. However, I had been out of the loop for a few years when it came to Pokemon, and it was a Nintendo Switch cartridge, so part of me was quick to dismiss the fact that I didn't recognize it. Maybe it was some kind of new release or maybe a limited edition version of the game that I just hadn't heard about yet. I wish I hadn't been so ready to accept that. I wish I had questioned the fact that I didn't recognize it or that the picture of the gray squirtle on the front gave me a strange and uncomfortable feeling. For weeks now, I haven't been able to stop playing for more than a few moments. I have barely slept, barely eaten, I'm wasting away, but I can't seem to... I need to play. I have to play. I hear the cartridge's gray tone melody. I must answer. Number 8, Strangled Red, Chapter 2. The screen read Pokemon Strangled Red version. Well, dang, it was a hack. Well, I thought I did find this, and so, I mean, it was a free game. I might as well try it. The name was odd, however. Strangled Red? Not only was it disturbing, but also just strange. I mean, people generally turn blue when choking, not red. Then again, maybe there was a pair of these hacks, and I just ended up with the red one. The more I thought about it, the more interested in and fixated on the gameplay I became. The first oddity I noticed was the start screen had a Charizard next to the trainer instead of a Charmander. Also, the Pokemon never cycled through like the original versions did. It just stayed Charizard permanently. I saw continue as an option on the main menu and decided to click it to check on the progress of whoever had this game prior to me. On the screen, I saw an ellipses, followed by one word, no. Number seven, at what cost? I grew interested in the hacked games that are apparently in any thrift store on eBay, or for the select many, it seems, freely distributed by the homeless population to random passers-by. However, the danger didn't come in receiving a hacked Pokemon game for me, but simply from looking into it. Asking around for things on the internet that aren't supposed to exist for a good laugh can apparently have its consequences. And now, I have been forced to pay a bodily price. Number 6, Strangled Red, Chapter 3. No, the screen read. And it was a definitive capital N no. No matter how many times I tried to continue the previous owner's save, the answer was the same. Eventually, I gave up and hit new game instead. My trainer sprite was the usual one, consistent with the original red version, but it didn't ask my name. When I went to the pause menu, I noticed this was because I was already given a default name. Steven. If you're wondering, Steven is not my actual name or anything like that, nothing creepy there. It was just weird that the game had chosen a name for me, was all. I checked out my Pokemon, a single Charmander, level 5, named Minky. Beginning Charmander stats, only new scratch and tail whip, nothing odd there. I returned to the game and began to explore. Downstairs was another trainer named Mike who spoke to me the instant I spotted them. Ready yet? Mike asked. 
Yeah, my trainer answered. I figured that Mike was meant to be my rival. But considering he was in the same house as me and there were two beds in my bedroom, I assumed that Mike and Steven must also be brothers. Number 5. True Story Some creepypastas are ridiculous. Silly stories about individuals dying after playing a game or the game talking to them. They sound impossible. But this story isn't. Because it really happened to a friend of mine. Jeremy loved playing Pokemon. He had played through the game multiple times and had even found hidden things in the games that no one else had found. Things no one had ever seen before. He went online to share hidden items and Pokemon even that one could only find through a very deep dive into the game code. But these things weren't supposed to be found and Pokemon apparently didn't like that he was sharing their secrets. They contacted him and told him that for his extreme love of these games, he'd won a prize, a trip to their head office. He was so excited, and I was honestly excited for him at the time, but he left, and I haven't seen him since. It's been two years. Initially, he said only he and his mom were going, but somehow all of his family has disappeared. I don't know what happened, I just know all his online profiles disappeared with him and with his family. Number 4. Strangled Red Chapter 4 As I continue to play, I observed that the story in this hacked version of Red was different, though the actual gameplay remained unchanged. I used Miki for every battle and she was growing surprisingly fast. She was, and I say this earnestly, super effective in pretty much every battle. Much more powerful, I felt, than a regular Charmander from Red would have even been. A veritable powerhouse. She even evolved quickly. Things started to get weird though once I reached Lavender Town. I tried to enter Pokemon Tower aiming to get a Ghastly when Steven suddenly said, I have no reason to be here. No matter what I tried, Steven refused to go to the tower. Why wouldn't he enter? I wondered. Eventually I surrendered and decided to just move on. The game continued pretty much as normal, except that like I said, this game did seem to be a little bit cooler actually even than the original. I defeated the Elite Four and had the final battle, which actually ended without any tension. But simply, the two brothers, who obviously Mike had shown up because he was my rival, congratulating one another on their accomplishments. Except that wasn't really where the game ended. Mike then asked Steven to borrow Miki to complete their Pokédex. Although I was hesitant, I agreed to the temporary trade, with Mike reassuring Steven he'd return Miki after his Pokedex was complete. But during the trade, the game froze, accompanied by a loud and startling snap sound that seemed to reverberate around my entire room. I reset the game. This time when I opened the menu, the Charizard was gone, and the only option on the screen was continue. I clicked it. Number 3. The Chair Ditto used to be my favorite Pokemon. Used to be being the key words here. I love Ditto. I always thought it would be an awesome Pokemon to have because it could be, well, just about anything. And I was right. Too right, in fact. I had gotten a Ditto as a birthday gift from my mom. I had come home after a whole year of being away, catching Pokemon, training up. My mom had gotten the Ditto for me as a sort of welcome back present. I was excited. I started doing everything with Ditto. Ditto was my new favorite Pokemon. But I noticed there was something off about this one. It didn't seem to like to shift into other forms. At least, not while I was looking at it. One night I couldn't sleep. I went downstairs and warmed up a glass of milk. I went to sit down in the living room, dropping into our big comfy recliner chair. As I sipped the milk, I felt a pulling at my back, like I was being vacuum sealed to the surface, to the back of the chair. I tried to readjust, but the pull only got stronger. My legs started to crumple up towards my chest. I dropped my milk, now struggling desperately to get up. As I flailed, I only seemed to be pulled more and more into the chair. Desperate to escape at this point, I focused all my strength at once and pushed with all all of the force I could muster away from the chair. I went flying across the room and nearly smashed my head off the coffee table on my way. As I stumbled to my feet, panting, I spun around. The chair was gone, and in its place was the ditto with that big goofy grin on its face. Blood dripped from the corner of its mouth. Number 2. Strangled Red Chapter 5 Resetting the game led to it continuing with a title card that read, one year later. In this dark and abyssal future, Mickey had seemingly died in the trade. When something went wrong with the process, that snap. As Steven, I was a shadow of my former self. I could see this just from looking at his trainer card. He also moved a lot slower in game, almost 
crawling. Tragically, I had to watch as everyone seemingly either shunned or pitied him as I left the Pokey Tower and made my way back home. A piece of himself had seemingly died with Mickey, having its own tombstone there. Steven ended up going on a quest to get the missing no. After every other attempt to recapture a Pokemon without any left to use in his inventory to do so had failed him. He used the missing no once he successfully and surprisingly easily captured it to resurrect Mickey. Or I tried to. Mickey was now in the inventory, but was corrupted with the status of DED, which I knew meant dead. After resurrecting Mickey, I had no option but to watch as Steven, now some kind of demonic creation named S exclamation point 3V 3N, Steven, basically Leet speak, selected Mickey. There were four options available, but the only option that allowed me to progress was Strangle. And with another loud snap, the game ended, cutting to black. Strangled Red is from Creepypasta fandom, and it has no author credited to it, sadly. There is also an alternate happy ending that was written by another user in the comments if this one left you bawling, because it is pretty sad, and I had to summarize, so you can also go there to check out the full story if you feel so inclined. Number one, Pokemon Blood Red. There are tons of stories out there about hacked Pokemon games. Some of them are really quite neat, such as the one about a version of the game where you get a ghost as a starter. I had heard so many of them. It was evident to me that they just couldn't be real. I mean, obviously, they couldn't be real, right? Which is why I wasn't afraid when I myself was offered my own hacked cartridge for a game. I figured, why not give it a whirl? I mean, they're just stories, right? They couldn't hurt me. After some hunting, I found a hacked cartridge that was called Pokemon Blood Red. I was excited to give it a try. I popped the cartridge in and began to play. I was given a grass Pokemon as my starting, and it had a powerful attack called Blade Slash. The more I used the Pokemon, the more powerful it got. It seemed unstoppable until I came to a gym that I had never seen before in any version of Pokemon. This gym had a boss Pokemon that was also a grass type, although it wasn't one that I recognized. Recognized. When I used my blade slash attack, it laughed at me and used something called grass shield. My attack bounced off the monstrous grass Pokemon boss I was up against and hit my Pokemon instead. I watched as it was torn asunder in front of me, graphically ripped to pieces by its own attack. Suddenly, I felt a sharp, stabbing pain in my stomach. When I looked down, Red was bleeding through the front of my shirt. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these stories were satisfyingly creepy. Until next time, keep on gaming on. Pew pew!